And then I've got other people on the side going, look, we all know Prince is Jehovah's Witness. And I'm sitting there going, Prin Prince is a Jehovah's Witness? <laughs> Since when? Now? Because um, he didn't try to sell me a watchtower once. <laughs> So he's going, and I just want, I printed up a bunch of facts from the internet about the Jehovah's Witness that I think Prince should read because it's very important stuff and he should know that he's being built and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, all right, we'll, we'll address that. Let's, uh, what else does everyone think? And trying to lead the discussion to where Prince wanted to go, but everyone wants to talk about religion and what they've heard on the album. And some people are incensed because uh, it's a very literal translation of the Bible, which means that the order of things is God, man, women, children, animals. So there, of course, there are women in the audience who are like, I, I don't go in for this man-woman shit, you know, like, I don't want to be led by any man, blah, blah, blah. And I'm sitting there trying to keep the fires from really erupting. Somebody comes up behind me and says, whispers in my ear, Prince wants you to stop talking about religion. And I'm like, keep talking, keep talking. What do you mean Prince wants me to stop talking about religion? Why? That's what they want to talk about. It's really, where is he? They're like, he's not here. And I was like, well, how the hell does Prince know that I'm talking about religion? And she's like, he just, he just, he'd prefer if you stop. He knows. <laughs> and I'm like, well, how am I supposed to I just jump to another topic and be like, hey, who likes pie? You know, so. <laughs> they just listen to an album about religion. That's what they want to fucking talk about. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, if he, if he wants it to not be about, if he wants it to be something else, maybe he should get his ass down here and do something about it. You know what I'm saying? And she's like, all right, all right, I just told you. And so the other person, people are talking, and I'm looking around the atrium while they're speaking. And there's a sign in front of the kitchen in the atrium that says the atrium, redone in 19 blah, blah, blah. Um, and then there's a piece of factoid, a factoid about the atrium that says, um, like every room in the building, this room is wired for sound, so Prince can record anywhere he likes. Which essentially means that if Prince is sitting in the shitter, and he wants to write Raspberry Beret, he can do it and record it while taking a shit without ever leaving the room. Every room in the place is wired for sound. So I'm reading that going, that's not interesting. Like, no wonder the motherfucker heard me. Every room is wired for sound. And I'm like, God, did he hear me say he should get his ass down here? And he might have because I'm sitting there talking to the person who's talking. And in the back of the room, I see Prince materialize. You know, not out of thin air, but suddenly he's there. <laughs> and I'm like, holy shit, he's, he's coming to dress me down. He's going to yell at me in front of these people. Like, I wouldn't. I, so I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to make him a part of it. And I was like, what do you think, sir? And everyone turns around, and they're like, oh, it's Prince. And they applaud. And he comes in, sits down, and uh, starts, he's listening to the group and letting me keep lead it. And then he starts joining in and talking. And if you know anything about Prince, he's very kind of quiet, solitary, likes to stay apart from people, but he starts joining in, gets real into it and shit like that. And I start hanging back. And I go into the back of the room and sit down and watch him. And so I'm getting to appreciate, like Prince sitting here talking to these people about spirituality and then about like radio and how radio sucks nowadays. And, and he, nobody owns the air over his head, so how come they can't play shit he wants to hear? You know, he's going everywhere. And I'm like, this is brilliant. Like, I would watch this. I'd watch this documentary about how a man falls apart in front of a crowd of people. <laughs> but I don't think that's the documentary he has in mind. So the next day, uh, same thing. We're talking, and he shows up, and I bring him in, and then he takes over, and he's in his element. He's just happy. He's sitting there like a minute. He's a, the robe short of being a minister, just preaching to the crowd, playing games with them, too. Like games where people like go to the other side of the room and shit. Like it's like kindergarten, and he's going like, "All right, who believes that Jesus is the Son of God?" You know, and half the people raise their hands. He's like, "Okay, everybody on this side of the room. Those who don't go over there." He's going, "Okay, we rule our lives by this." And he pulls a Bible out of his back pocket, and I'm like, "I didn't even know he had a back pocket," because <laughs> the outfits he fucking wears don't really lend to pockets. But but not only that, but he's got a fucking Bible in a pocket Bible. I'm like, "This is fucked up." <laughs> Um, he's like, we're going to lead our lives according to this. Over there, you lead your lives according to what you do. So you have no laws. We have laws. Now we want your women. So we're going to go take your women. And there's nothing you can do about it. Women, come over here. There's nothing you can do about it because you don't lead your lives by this. But we can take your women. I'm sitting there going, is that what it says in the Bible? 
Because if it is, I'm going back to church. And he's going through these parlor games and shit, and everyone's having a grand old time. He's in his element, and he's real happy. And I was kind of pleased. You get to see a part of him that's, that, that I'd never seen before in my life and everything I've ever watched, many interviews, anytime he's done press. So uh, the next day, he's like, I don't think I'm going to be able to, to do it today because I've got a concert. I've got a, a show to do at, C, at the St. Paul XL Arena. He's like, I'm going to do a show at night, and my leg hurts, so I'm not going to do the q and A. I'm not going to join the Q&A today. You're on your own. I said, why is your leg hurt? He's like, I've just got something wrong with my knee. And I was like, do you think it's because you always wear heels? And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, well, maybe your knee wouldn't hurt so bad if you wore some sneakers once in a while. And he goes, Kevin, it has nothing to do with sneakers. And I was like, all right, man, I was just checking. You know, why don't you want, we need you, Prince. So I go outside, and Stephanie's like, you didn't just mention sneakers to him, did you? And I was like, yeah, was that a bad thing? She's like, yeah. I was like, well, does he ever wear them and shit? She's like, he, has, he does. Well, what is your fascination with prints and sneakers? I was like, I've never seen him in sneakers. Does he wear sneakers? She's like, sometimes he plays basketball, he'll put on some sneakers. I was like, get out of here. He takes his heels off and plays ball and sneakers? She said, yeah. I said, where does he keep them? She's like, let it go. I was like, what does he wear when he plays basketball? Does he wear the outfits like he wears now? Because every outfit looks like, you know, he's about to be like, alas, poor York. I knew him, Horatio, you know. And she's like, no, he doesn't wear that. He wears, like, warm-up suits or so and stuff. I said, get out of here. He's got warm-up pants. She's like, yeah, he wears warm-up. He's got warm-up pants with the buttons down the side. And he wears, like, a sweatshirt. And I was like, where, where, where does he keep? Does he wear it under his clothes? And she's like, no, he's got them to the side. I was like, well, are they made? Like, like his outfits are made? Like, are they a designer kind of basketball wear? She's like, no, he gets them from a store. I was like, Prince shops at a fucking store? And she said, no, no, we just have to, we have to go out and get stuff for him sometimes. I said, where? Where do you get clothes for Prince? And she's like, Nordstrom's. I was like, Nordstrom's? Nordstrom sells stuff at Prince's size? She's like, Nordstrom's boys department. <laughs> and at this point, I'm like, that is so fucking cute. That's what the documentary should be about. You know, like, I would watch a documentary where Prince is like, all right, I'm little, you know? I'm a huge rock god, but I'm little, and I have to get my clothes at the Nordstrom's Boys Department. <laughs> but that's not the documentary he's interested in making. So, um, so he skips the day, that day. The next day, he, he's supposed to come, and we're conducting one of the last sessions, and we're in a very small room, and um, we cram about 75 people into this room. It's really hot, really tight, lights boiling, everyone's sweating, not just me this time. And we're going on and on for about three hours. <laughs> 